Hi, my name is Jackson Davies. Uh, I guess I'm a spoken word poet. I would say I got into poetry. I've always been writing poetry for ever since I was a teenager in school, really. But um, you know, really awful stuff in sketchbooks and that sort of thing. Um, but then a couple of guys I knew uh, were starting to run this new night called Open Your Mouth. I decided to go along, put my money where my mouth is, and uh, really try and perform some of it. It was terrifying, it was terrible, but the experience was incredible. And uh, I guess since then I've done loads of gigs uh, in various locations. And um, yes, yeah, it's, it's great. I love it. Uh, I've got loads of inspirations across the world of uh, rap and uh, spoken word. Um, Quite into my hip hop, especially the High Focus label. Uh, rappers like Ocean Wisdom, Dabla uh, are incredible. Scroobius Pip as well, I think, bridges that gap between poetry and uh, hip hop. Uh, if we were talking literally just spoken word itself, Tom Gill, I really write, Kate Tempest, um, but really just people in the local scene as well. They're like everyone pushes each other forward with the amount of quality they put forward. So, yeah, ev everyone inspires me. Um, I guess there's been a few highlights. Uh, this has pushed me forward into doing loads of stuff I never thought I would do before. Um, performing at Victorious Festival was a pretty awesome highlight. Um, last year I performed at the Isle of Wight Festival for Speaker's Corner as well, which is an incredible experience. I get to do my piece, then go and watch Idols play all for free. It was fantastic. Um, but really, every gig is a highlight in its own way. You learn something from each thing you do, even if it's something where you've got maybe 10 people in the audience um, versus... 60. It's uh, an incredible experience either way and I love it. I think the best audience response you can get is anything that shows that the audience is enthused and engaged with what it is that you're saying. So whether that's applause or whooping or hollering, you know, that's all great. But even things like heckling, I've been heckled a few times and I think it's ultimately kind of a good thing with the stuff that I do. Certainly if it's the political stuff, because it means that people are engaging it on, with it on a level that's touching buttons. And uh, I think that's, that's something I quite like doing. I like uh, getting people to engage with what they think and perhaps challenge a few opinions if I can. I think the number one most important to th thing to me as an artist is authenticity. I mean, you know, I feel awkward calling myself an artist even. Um, and that's through years of just trying to grind through it and you're watching some acts and they're very, very maybe worthy. And uh, it doesn't feel like you're seeing the true person that you that you're come there to watch. So the more authentic and the more truthful you are with the stuff you put out, I think that's ultimately the only way you can be. So, yeah, for me, authenticity. I still can't believe that it's the 21st century and some of our peers still want to keep a monarchy that covers up scandal, making justice a mockery. We should call in the vandals and smash up the palace crockery. See, some people think the queen is still a leader, like the nations of the world who give her monkeys who succeed her. And Eton public schoolboys can get away with paedophilia, but Britain's still great, mate, if you believe the media. When they're feeding you lies, there's no compassion in their eyes. There's fascists back in fashion, but we still don't want to rise. We're distracted by appearance, like an MP's lack of ties or celebrities' thighs. Well, they plot and they devise, so we don't realise. And I spy? Over the channel, there's still thousands of refugees. And despite what biggest want us to think, that's still humanity. We're given into irritation and insanity, comparing them to rats and roaches, it's like a Nazi fantasy. And when only the rich can afford higher education, that's the definition of class segregation. See their ongoing mission to cause societal regression by cutting working class areas, diverting all attention from the one million people having to use food banks regularly. While the bankers that fuck things, they get bonuses quarterly. Riot cops dispatch to keep us calm and orderly while the 1% is getting their reward in early. It's bread and circus for you plebs, fear the reds under beds, as if McCarthy still says what should be seen or read. And the vault of information on the internet is led to make us think it's no one's fault when kids are underfed, or even dead, due to brutal cuts to support networks. And multiple threads of unemployed who can't get work, and rich kids with dreads in clubs corners on Ketlurk. And they'll tell you who to trust while operatives conduct wet work in developing countries throughout the Middle East. Why would they go for peace when there's no reason to cease? And people still to fleece with barefaced lies under lease for government forces because 
because they own the police. Why would they go for peace when they can get your piece of the pie by just taking it off you by force? And if you try to shake it off, they'll call in the laws with a high-vis jacket swinging clubs from their horse. What are you going to do if they've got probable cause? See, Supergrass didn't mention if you were caught by the fuzz, don't be Asian or black like Mark Duggan was. Crime apparently don't pay, but war definitely does. For every mine that goes boom or every bullet that buzz, it lines the pockets of executives from private companies. And our democratic process ensures these corporate thieves make billions at our expense a social disease hiding behind euphemistic names. And every one of these, from Kemling to Tales to BAE Systems to an ordinance on civilians with the guns that find missed them, they run abhorrent schemes like for-profit prisons and they get away with murder because there's no one to resist them. And I mean that literally. They murder people blatantly through fear and control in a business that is patently designed to enhance any bit of worry latently embedded by chance in your head and basically designed to enshrine that depressing state of mind so you're resigned and defined by a world that keeps you blind and your mind's kept running by the everyday grind and every opportunity is taken to remind it's a world in which they alone hold the power. They don't care about the throne because that changes by the hour. So don't worry about that clown who came down from Trump Tower. Worry about the machinations run to keep you dour to make you cower in fear at the sound of the bomb. Well, there's something in your belly to yeah, something's very wrong, but you're distracted by the telly because Strictly's on. And maybe we can be get to see who the next one is who won. A maximum six-month period of relevance and fame for its own damn sakes. That's how you play the game. They don't want you awake. They'd rather you stayed lame because it makes it so much easier to drive us all insane. It won't change. It's stuck in this way because we let it through apathy and boredom and not wanting to get it. And I'm not innocent of this when all I do is rap a bit. But even if 1% of my stunning rapier wit... Yes, yeah, sarcastic, but if it succeeded to awaken us, to make us see we don't need two parties so analogous, I'm not going to say the Illuminati's controlling us. There's no need for conspiracy when it's all so obvious. But maybe I'm preaching to the converted, and it's difficult to see how this dystopia could be averted. The course of justice is averted, while ministers act sinister and the richest are alerted, with concerted efforts to pervert the wealth divide. See, the Panama Papers show they're not on your side. Unless you're making six figures, then you get a free ride, and they let the papers die out. That's and they let the poorest die out, that's financial genocide. And the side that the papers are on is of right-wing think tanks, who themselves get funded by the reps of city banks. They aim to sell the story, you're a paranoid crank if you dare to question narratives or step outside your rank. If you didn't go to public school and know the right folk, then you don't get the money or the power or the joke. And they'll openly laugh while benefits go up in smoke. And the war on drugs is fine if it don't affect their coke. But if you took rock, then you need to be banged up. Figures are unavailable, MOJ have clammed up, and they get away with this because no one ever clam stands up against a Thatcherite ideology that they still hang up as something to be proud of, like they deserve what they get, whether it's tax cuts or leg ups or unearned respect. And if you're not if you're not born upper class, then your whole life is set to work inside a system from which you cannot be let out or set free. Don't believe that myth of bootstraps they made up to placate you, these tax dodging rats. If you want to be successful, just make sure you're sat at the top table, chucking the working man straps. You'll bleed from the cuts that they sling like darts, and they want you to stay quiet and just play your part. But if you ain't rich, then good luck working in the arts, because with that trust fund, you ain't playing your part. But apart from all of this, our politics boring. Who cares about that third world they wage war in, hacked phones that they're calling, champagne that they're pouring, and all the crack whoring, the facts they're obscuring of wealth that they're storing. If you're drawing from this that they're taking the piss and treating all of us like we're gullible pricks, then ignore that false carrot and instead grab that stick and we'll beat these false masters, ignore their fake tricks. Because things will only change if we manage to break free. And that can be arranged if we smash the oligarchy, see the limits on our way of life as just fantasy. We can smash the chains and be the ch change that we want to see.